we have all our pattern pieces cut out, I think we can get started sewing. So if you guys are ready, I say let's do this. Let's get sewing. I'm Kristen, also known as Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And welcome back to part two of the Brumby Skirt Sew Along, a pattern by Megan Nielsen, and a wonderful pattern. I'll pop a link to it down in the description box below. And if you're just tuning in, I'll also pop a link to part one at the top of the screen, so you can watch that first if you are interested in joining along. And in this video, we'll start off by pinning and sewing our waistband pieces together. This step, by the way, is out of order from what the pattern tells us to do, which is to sew the two front skirt panels together first. There really is no explanation for this other than I'm terrible at following directions. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't really matter which step I execute first, so yay, crisis averted. Uh, but yeah, pressing forward, uh, I will cover the first step later on in the tutorial. But now that the pieces are pinned together, I'm going to take this over to the machine and stitch them together using a 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So we are ready to start sewing. Um, and one trick I like to do if you are new to sewing and you have trouble keeping track of where your seam allowance is, I like to take some washi tape and mark my seam allowance right on my machine. So right here is the 5 8 seam allowance, which is what we're going to be using um, according to the pattern. Um, so I, I like to tape it in a straight line over here. Again, if you're new to sewing, you're not keeping your eye on the needle when you sew. You're keeping your eye on the seam allowance edge all the time. Like right before it goes under the needle, you're just keeping, making sure that your fabric is butt up against the seam allowance. And that's the only thing you really have to pay attention to. Um, occasionally you can glance over at the needle and make sure your finger's not going underneath it. But you know, at the same time, you're just focusing on this edge right here. Okay, so we have our waistband pieces sewn together. So I'm gonna set these aside. Remember to keep your pattern pieces with the pattern pieces, <laughs> with the cutout pattern pieces um, for later so you know what you're dealing with. Um, and now the next step, I have to take the front part of the skirt, the two front pieces, which are somewhere under here. So the directions say for us to finish the front seam of each front skirt pattern piece. So I'm gonna take it over to my serger and do that. Uh, you can also use a zigzag stitch or pinking shears, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using my serger. Okay, so I've serged the edges of both front pattern seams, uh, and you can tell it's the front piece because of this curve for the pocket. Uh, so next up, we're going to seam these two pieces together. And again, you want to make sure right sides are together, uh, and if you can't tell which is the right or wrong side, like my fabric, just make sure that both pieces are mirroring each other. Okay, so I've stitched the front center seam of the skirt, and now I'm just gonna give that a nice little press to set the stitches. And now we're gonna press the seams open. I'm gonna attempt to do this with one hand, but uh, you just wanna finger press this open, and you see the edge is already finished for you. So here's the skirt under the machine, and obviously you're not gonna be able to see where your seam allowance is, but the cool thing about quarter of an inch seam allowances is that if you put the if you put the edge of your foot butt up against the seam, that is gonna stitch exactly a quarter of an inch away from the seam. So all you have to do is keep your eye on on the, the seam line right here and you should be good to go. So let's let's stitch that top stitch. And when you're handling slippery fabric like this, you don't wanna tug or pull, you just wanna kind of gently rest your hands on the fabric and guide it. Don't like do any sudden movements, just gently guide it through the machine. So my top stitching is done. I'm just gonna go over 
with my iron really quickly. It's totally fine if there's a little puckering, that'll all smooth out once everything's put together. Hey guys, so I'm just looking at the pattern instructions and I did the same thing the first time around. I totally missed the very first step, which is attaching the pockets. And my cat is totally destroying my craft room right now. But that's not a big deal because thankfully I can just tack on the pockets right now. Uh, so if you have been following along with the pattern and are just like, what the heck are you doing, Kristen? Yes, I messed up. I forgot the first step, but we're just gonna, we're gonna just tackle that right now. It's not a big deal. Okay, so I have my assembled skirt front. We're just gonna lie that flat. And this is where the pocket lining is going to be attached. And I'm gonna take pattern piece 10, the pocket lining, and with right side spacing, I'm gonna match the curve of the pocket lining to the skirt front. So again, I'm gonna take my pattern piece. This is a cut out one, again, I'm working with fabric that I can't tell the difference, so I'm just gonna match up the curve and pin it together. And then once this is stitched in place at 5 eighths of an inch, I am going to use pinking shears and finish the edges that way. And we're gonna, once you're done with this side, you're gonna just do it to the other side. So I stitched the pocket lining to the front skirt piece and now I'm going to take my pinking shears. Pinking shears are also a really great way to finish a seam if you don't have a serger. You can also use a zigzag stitch, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you that you can do this without a serger. And you wanna be careful not to trim into your stitches, obviously, or catch any fabric underneath. It's happened to me many times. Uh, you learn the hard way, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and you just want to trim about maybe a quarter of an inch away from your stitch line. So the next step, we need to flip and press the seam we just sewed on either side of the skirt. So this part's a little tricky, but I like to press the seam open. So you're going to take your finger and kind of press that open right there, the seam, and give it a little press and I go over it. You don't have to press down, just kind of give it a little steam. Um, and just go all around and use the nose, use the tip of the iron nose to just kind of press those seams open. You can use your finger too. I'm doing this all one-handed, guys, so <laughs> slight acrobatics. Apologies for any wiggling of the of the ironing board, but I'm trying to do this as gently as possible. You just kind of want to gently push the seams apart, the seam apart from the front, if that makes any sense. So I flipped and pressed the pocket lining to the wrong side of the skirt and I've pinned it in place. So all those raw edges are sandwiched in between here. And now I'm just going to top stitch a quarter of an inch from the edge. Uh, and I've placed pins just to kind of help keep that fold in place. So the pattern actually says to top stitch half an inch away from the edge, but personal preference, I'm just gonna do a quarter inch, just my own personal brand of crazy, crazy. so, uh, but yeah, feel free to do what you feel would look best on your skirt. And again, uh, you wanna keep this line butt up against underneath the, the presser foot, that's gonna stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So you wanna just keep your eye at the edge of the presser foot and the edge of your fabric, and that'll give you a quarter inch. So now that I've top stitched the edge of the pockets right over here at a quarter of an inch, again, the pattern says to do half an inch, but I chose to do a quarter of an inch. Now we are going to flip things over to the wrong side. I've also given my stitches again a nice little press to set the stitches and we're gonna take pattern piece number nine pocket facing for versions one and two and place it over over the the pocket lining so the curves are matched you're gonna start to see that this creates the finished waistline of the skirt front so hope that makes sense right sides together we're gonna match that lining up and pin it in place and then stitch. 
And this is the part that gets really exciting because once this part is all stitched together, it's gonna start to look like a skirt. All right, so now we're gonna stitch these pieces together, making sure not, making sure that we're stitching just the pocket curve only, not the, the actual skirt, uh, because we want this to be free flowing when we wear it. So we're just gonna stitch the floppy part, if that makes sense. Again, make sure you're not catching any other fabric underneath. And if you notice that your edges are not e completely even or lining up, but they're flush and they're lying flat um, and they just didn't come out correctly when you cut them out, it's okay. Just follow the line that is reaching the seam allowance line. I'm gonna finish the seam with my serger. And when it comes to the serger, I just kind of like, there's a little dot on my machine that I just like to keep in front of the stitch line and that's usually enough of a seam allowance for my serger. Oops, wrong pedal. And here we are. If you've made it this far, you've attached the pockets. Congratulations. Um, and I've also, at this point, it's like origami. We're going to take this little edge and match up all the edges and notches, and then we're going to baste everything. We're going to baste these edges in place. So they stay in place while we maneuver the rest of maneuver through the rest of the pattern. So I put uh, two pins here and also two pins on this edge of the pocket. Um, you know, but when you flip it over, you should have what looks to be the front of the skirt. I pinned these at this edge in place and I pinned this edge in place and I'm just going to put some basting stitches, um, just a row of long stitches along this edge and we can move on to the next step. Hey guys, I am back from the Dye Dungeon. I had to send out the newsletter, do some skeining and labeling. I actually took a break from sewing and I'm, I'm back to the sewing machine, back in my craft room. It is about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I was hoping to have this skirt done by now, but between filming and uh, sewing and getting stuff done for work, it's just taking a little bit more time than I anticipated. But, you know, we are back in my craft room and I still have the rest of the afternoon to work on this. So I hope you guys are hanging in uh, and following along and enjoying this and find, finding this helpful. Uh, and yeah, just just having fun. Uh, but anyway, let's let's get back to it. Okay, so we have how much? Okay, wow, I forgot that I did all this. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have all the skirt pieces sewn together. So the next step is to actually sew the back portion together. So. Uh, because we are installing a zipper in the back, we have my little tripod over there, um, we are only going to sew part way up the back of the skirt and then we're going, going to install the zipper. I have to check the directions first, but I think that's, I think that's what we do. But yeah, I, regardless, we are only going to sew part way up the back and then install the zipper. So again, I'm gonna set my machine with a stitch length of four for base stitching. I'm gonna make sure that I have a long tail so I can grab onto that for gathering. You want to make sure that you're stitching along the waistline, not the bottom. <laughs> so double check to make sure you have the right end of your skirt uh, under the machine. And you wanna stitch about a scant, according to the instructions, you wanna stitch a scant 5 eighths of an inch from the edge. And you're just gonna stitch all across the waistline. And when you come to the end, you wanna pull out a long enough tail and trim it. And now we're gonna do it again. We're just gonna stitch a quarter of an inch away from the first stitch line. So basically a quarter of an inch from the edge. Again, you wanna make sure that you have a long tail for, your, for you to grab later. So stretch out that thread as much as you can. Um, so I've stitched two rows of basting stitches all along my waistline. So now we're just gonna go ahead and gather it. And remember how we had those tails? Uh, you're just gonna grab both those uh, thread tails. You're gonna grab two of these and then just like, a, it's kind of like 
you're drawing the curtains basically <laughs> that's what it always reminds me of um, but you want to do this very gently because if you do break your threads you're gonna have to do this all over again which is not not fun uh, so yeah just be very gentle uh, and just kind of make sure you just get a good set of gathers in there first don't worry about um, the size of the waist yet uh, and you have to be a little bit careful when you get to your seam lines. The instructions do say you can do it section by section, uh, but for me this is this is just easier. I just have to be a little bit more delicate with um, my pulling. And again, this is not my favorite part of sewing gathered skirts. If you're into the gathered look, the effort and work is just so worth it. This is about time where you can probably put on like a really nice podcast or an audiobook or catch up with, you know, a YouTube video channel or something. Uh, and then you can go, eventually you can go over to the other side and do the same thing. And eventually the gathers will meet in the middle. We have a visitor. Are you here to help me? Are you here to help, Bibs? Or just watch? She's just here to watch. So now that I have a bunch of gathers built into the waistband of my skirt, I'm gonna grab one of my waistband pieces that has the interfacing on it and attach it to the waistline of the skirt. Now, when I made my muslin, my big mistake was that I sewed it on upside down. So the side that you're supposed to attach is this rounded edge uh, and the dipped side is the part that's gonna go around your waist, if that makes any sense. So you can see, it's gonna go around my waist and this is the round curved side. So that part is gonna be attached to the skirt piece. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the middle um, and that should be notched. If not, you can always fold it, you can always match up the, the seams and finger press the center point of your waistband to find that easily. And sometimes I like to put a little pin in there to make it visually obvious. Um, and then you're going to match that pin up to the center seam of the skirt and pin it in place. Cool. The next thing you're gonna do is match up the edges of the skirt to the edge of the waistband. And on the other side, I did not do a good job ironing, fusing this interfacing, did I? Oh well. All right, pin that in place. And next up, you are going to just ease the skirt, the skirt gathers to fit the waistband. So I'm gonna give that a little stretch. And this part is gonna take a little time also, I'm not gonna lie, um, but you're gonna match up your seams, the seam of the waistband to the seam of the skirt to help kind of, you know, even things out a bit and then from there you can just simply continue easing everything into place. Let's see, it seems like there are way more gathers over here. So I'm just gonna Yeah. Yep. Again you want to be very gentle when you're doing this, making sure that you're not going to tear your gather your um, basting stitches that are holding the gathers in place. So it can help to flip things around. Oops. Just so you can see how the gathers are behaving. And again, this is all just eyeballing it, making sure everything is just even, even Steven. Kenny, sleeping on the job. No, kitty paw, kitty paw. So yeah, I have all these gathers. They seem fairly even. Uh, they don't have to be perfect, but you know, you want a nice even spread of gathers throughout. And then on the other side, um, it's smooth and everything's in place and we are good to go to the machine. Okay, when you're stitching down the center of your basting stitches, you want to go very slowly uh, and you wanna make sure that your fabric is lying flat on the bottom and your, and your gathers are facing up um, and that your gathers are 
lying as perpendicular or as straight as possible uh, to prevent any puckering. And we're just gonna stitch at 5 eighths of his seam allowance. The next step you're gonna to wanna to do is flip everything over and make sure that you have no snags, no puckers, and because I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect when it comes to this stuff, I do have a pucker right there. So I've gotta bring out the seam ripper, this little guy, and unpick it and redo it. Um, but don't, don't worry, it's kind of like, if you are a knitter, it's kind of like, you know, a drop stitch. It's not gonna go running down or anything unless you're working with like super slippery fabric. But this is nothing to freak out over. Your your gathers are not gonna come unraveled. You just wanna be very careful. Just unpick a couple stitches and repin it and stitch over and, you know, back stitch on, you know, either side and you should be good. You wanna gent, like when you unpick the stitches, you just want to gently give it a nice little tug to kinda loosen things up. You don't wanna be too abrasive. go. Just that. And again, you just want to make sure everything is lying smoothly, as flat as can be. And now I'm just going to go back on the machine and backstitch, stitch across and backstitch again just to kind of secure that back in place. So now that we've stitched our waistband to the gathered section of the skirt, let's flip it over and make sure we don't have any crazy puckers. Nope. The only thing you can probably see are some of your basting stitches, which is totally fine. You can remove those if you want now or later, whatever you fancy. Um, but now we're going to press the get, we're not going to press the gathers, but we are just going to, Hey Katie. <laughs> um, we're going to press the seam up towards the, uh, the waistband. But one thing that the directions don't tell you to do, which I was a little surprised, uh, is to trim the seam allowance because you see this right here, this is all, if you don't trim that, that's going to create a lot of bulk in your waistband, which is something you do not want. So just take your um, scissors and after you make sure that there are no puckers or anything on this side, uh, you're just going to take your scissors and give it a little trim and just trim it down again to about maybe a quarter of an inch near stitch line and again make sure that you are not cutting into your stitches or any important fabric and bella is knocking all of my pens off the table as she does and you can even serge this if you want if it you know makes you feel better but because this is going to be concealed under the waistband, you're, it's not even gonna be visible. Now that that's trimmed, we're gonna take this to the ironing board, press it up, and finish the waistband. So here we are at the ironing board, um, and you're just gonna gently press your seam allowance up towards the waistband, add a little seam. You don't wanna crush your gathers, so just gently, gently kind of caress, <laughs> caress the seam up towards the waistband. Um, and I'm doing this one-handed again. And here we are on the right side. And again, you don't want to crush your gathers. Just steam them. Light steaming, light pressing. Just ever so grazing. <laughs> there we go. 